Hi YouTube, it's RS331 here, and welcome to the Stanley Parable, episode 4. Now we're going to do, we're going to do some more stuff today on here. Um, we're going to, I'm, well I'm going to, I don't know why I say like, we, it's like, it's just me and you're just watching me play and I'm controlling it actually so and uh, today I'm going to go and I am going to go to the elevator place and go up on the elevator because I'm I'm curious as to what happens there so anyway a new game chapter one the Stanley Parable start new game This is the story of a man named Stanley. Never heard that before. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Did it really? Something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. <gasps> Conspiracy. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, <sighs> wow. or even say hi. Never in all dun, his years dun, at the dun. company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Let's go. Stanley Bye. decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Left. Look, uh, upper it is left, see? If we go here, left, right, let's go to the door on the left. This was okay. not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. So I'm at the first open door and it says, go left, so this way. Aha, uh -huh, that's good. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible no. he wasn't fired years ago. No. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he Bullshit. was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, I'm not ruining Stanley it. decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. You know, I, um, I thought things over and I thought... Yeah, I deserve to be punished, so let's go up. Oh no, it's not going to go well. Why did I do this? So stupid. Wait, what? Come on. Lift, be faster. Oh, there we go, we're right here. Yeah, hi, hi there, hello. What the hell? This isn't creepy. That does that. This looks. What the. No, no! Why did I do this? It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. 
But he thought Boy. to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. No. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. No, Spamky, he's got to do something. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous Wait, metal the narrator jaws. narrating in a, a narrator instant, narrating me Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone narrator body, killing him instantly no no it doesn't no it didn't no it didn't no 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 run away yes screw you I win I win and death trap, trap let's get it it's a shame then that for all his work it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he what really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? Wait, what? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's so weird. Why the hell is this happening again? What the hell? Oh, look, Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. Yeah, you got nothing on me. You got nothing on me. I win. I win. There's no, no salvation for either no. of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. What the hell? I so want to but be out. To me. This story is not over. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking. I don't want to. Looking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll. Uh, I want to win. It'll be your but only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time. Uh. Well, so yeah, that was the Stanley Parable. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I may do one last episode, I'll see how it goes, but. If I can't, ma I'm not sure I'll manage to get another ending out of this. But if I can, then I will try. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye.